fourth war that's going on in Iraq, the, war, the proxy war against Iran, how did Iran get involved? Iran's been involved from the very, very beginning. Don't forget, you know, Iran and Iraq share a land border. There's many tribes and families that, that live on both sides of this border. In the 80s, Saddam launched a vicious eight-year war against Iran. So Iran very much has legitimate national security interests in terms of Iraq. And we've seen Iran aggressively pursue those interests. What happened during the invasion as US and British forces advanced from Kuwait to the north clearing Saddam's forces as they went. We saw essentially an Iranian-backed invasion at the same time that filled the vacuum that was left behind. It was extremely well organized and coordinated. And in fact, the irony is you, we saw Iran use the, the very same successful tactic that the American Green Berets used in Afghanistan to win against the Taliban and Al-Qaeda against U.S. interests in Iraq. You mean covert forces? Very much. Small numbers. During Saddam's regime, hundreds of thousands of Iraqi Shia fled to Iran. Iran saw many of these people not only as brethren and, and refugees to be protected, but as an asset. Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of these Iraqi Shia who were in Iran were mobilized and used by the Iranians within its armed forces. What would they do? They went in with money? They went in with arms? With everything. What they did is, in the chaos and the vacuum of power, that was left behind the advancing coalition forces, they took power. They took the governor's office, the police chief's office, the Ba'ath Party headquarters, and they never really left. And indeed, what the British found, as we learned from the British Army report into the execution killing of six of its military police in 2003 by Iranian-backed Iraqi militias, is that when they arrived in one of these major border provinces here, they found that the militias were already so strong that the report said the British had a choice to either confront them or to accommodate them. And the report says that for the sake of stability and security, they felt they had no other choice but to accommodate these militias. Mm. So that entrenched the militias in power. And they have given the militias of, like for instance, Muqtada al-Sadr, they have given them training, they have given them arms and money. Yeah. What we saw with many of these networks and these organizations that were in Iran is that they were kept in place and they moved into Iraq. And with them came what's essentially Iranian Green Beret advisors. You had Iranian form of CIA advisors all come in with them to guide, direct, to channel them. And even elements within Iraq, like Muqtada al-Sadr, the rebel anti-American American cleric and his Medi Army militia. Muqtada and his militia were very different to these others. They never fled Iraq. They didn't go into Iran. They remained in Iraq. Now in the beginning, that was a great rallying cry for Muqtada. He was able to represent himself as a true nationalist. I stayed while these people left. I suffered with you. That was very persuasive. That drew a lot of people to his cause. But over time, we've seen Iran not only court Muqtada, but then militarily support him. We've seen a flow of money, a flow of arms, and a flow of training back and forth. When we come back, we're going to take a look at what are the options are now for the United States and the region. Where do we go from here? We'll be right back.